OK. That was loading for over an hour. But it is finally over, so we're ready to explore the Nessus tool. It is pretty simple to use. Your page should be blank since you haven't performed any scan yet. So we can click right here on this X button, just to see better this page. And all we want to do from here is go to the new scan button. Right here, we will see all of the available options that we can do for our scans. So we got basic network scan, as it says a full system scan suitable for any host. We got the advanced scan, configure a scan without using any recommendations. And we got a bunch of the other options and for some of them we need the Nessus Professional version in order to use, such as this one, this one, this one and all of these that have the upgrade on them. Now, as I already talked about, with Nessus Essentials we're only going to be able to scan local IP addresses. Inside of a company you could use this tool to scan their networks for vulnerabilities. However, you cannot scan an external IP address with this. So scanning a website is not going to work, unless it's inside of your network. Another thing to remind you is that we can scan with a free version up to 16 IP addresses. And if I'm not mistaken, those 16 IP addresses clean after 90 days, so after 90 days you will be able to scan more IP addresses, but I'm not sure about that. And if you have a free version and you have more than 16 targets, you will have to scan that network with multiple NASA scans. So, scanning big enterprise networks for big companies will require NASA's professional version. But what we want to do here, to learn NASA's and how to use it, we want to go onto the basic network scan. And this basic scan will require us to specify some options. Now, for our first scan, we'll be scanning only Metasploitable. So, Turn it on, if you haven't already. Check out the IP address of Metasploitable, in my case it is 192.168.1.4. And once you do that, we can proceed to specify our options. In the General tab, under the name, you can specify anything you want, I will simply just type Metasploitable. Under the description, I will just leave this empty, there is nothing really to specify here. You can put anything you want here, just so you can recognize which type of scan you did and on which target you did it. In the folder, we will leave it on my scans, and in the targets, we specify the IP address of our target machine. Since right now we are only scanning one machine, we will specify the IP address of Metasploitable. But if you were to scan a network, you would specify something like this 192.168.1.1 slash 24, in case it is a slash 24 network. I believe you can also specify it like this, so dash 192.168.1.255. But right now, let us just go with our Metasploit. And with the free version we can't even scan 255 hosts. Remember, we can only scan 16. Once you specify this, we want to proceed to the Schedule tab. And here, this Schedule tab is useful once you want to schedule your scans on a certain period of time or you just want to schedule a scan while you're doing something else on the site. For now, we're going to leave it off. Under the notifications, you can choose if you want to send results to some emails over SMTP server. We're not going to be doing that right now. In the discovery tab, this is the important stuff. Here we choose how many and which ports we want to scan. We have an option of scanning common ports, and this is similar to Nmap default port scan. It will only scan most popular ports. Or you can select scan all ports, which we're going to use right now, to scan all 65,000 ports on our Metasploitable. And if you want, there is a custom option, which is the third option right here, but we're pretty satisfied with this scan all ports option. If we read the settings, the general settings always test the Nessus local host, Use fast network discovery. Under the port scanner settings, we have scan all ports. Use netstat if credentials are provided. Use scene scanner if necessary. And we're pinging hosts using TCP, ARP, and ICMP. Good. Once you set this to scan all ports, you can go to the assessment. And in the assessment tab, we can choose what we want to scan for. So there are a few options. If I click right here on the scan type, we have scan for known web vulnerabilities, scan for all web vulnerabilities, 
and scan for all web vulnerabilities complex. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will be scanning for known web vulnerabilities. Why? Well, this will just take lesser time to finish. When you run scan for complex web vulnerabilities, it usually takes a lot more time. And we can see right here under the general settings, avoid potential false alarms, enable CGI scanning, and web applications we will crawl up to 1000 pages, up to 6 directories, and we will test for known vulnerabilities in commonly used web applications. These are our assessment settings. But also keep in mind that if we discover some web vulnerabilities, we will see how to attack them in the web penetration testing section. That will come right after the exploitation section. For now, let us just see whether Nessus will find something juicy. Right after, we go to the report settings, and usually you want to leave this on default, so we're not going to be changing anything right here. And finally, in the advanced tab, we will leave it on default for now and proceed to click on save. So click on save right here. And you should have your scan right here. Now, you will notice that it does not automatically start. We must launch it. And we do that by clicking on this arrow right here, which says launch. Click on it. In just a few seconds, here it is, these green arrows will start spinning and our scan has officially started. This will try to discover all the vulnerabilities it can find for the Metasploitable machine. Now, keep in mind that these scans can take a lot longer than Nmap scans. You can always check the current state of scan by clicking on the scan name, in our case on the Metasploitable, and you will be able to see what it managed to find for now during the scan. Different vulnerabilities will be marked with different colors. We will have blue color, which means information disclosure. And what that is, is it possibly managed to find some information that should be private, or it managed to find the service version or something similar that allows us to find out more information about the target. It doesn't necessarily mean that the information is useful though. Then we have green, yellow and orange vulnerabilities, or also known as low, medium and high vulnerabilities. And at the end, we get the most interesting vulnerabilities, which are critical vulnerabilities. This usually includes remote code execution or something similar. So what you can also do, you can click on them, and this is just what it managed to find at this current point of scan. So we got one critical vulnerability for now. We got two mixed vulnerabilities, one medium vulnerability, and some information disclosure right here. Let's go back, and we're going to wait for this to finish, and once it's done, we will get back to it and see the results. Alright, it is finally over. And we can see, if I click on the scan, that it managed to discover a bunch of vulnerabilities. All kinds of them. Let us go through these results and see some of the vulnerabilities it found. Remember, we are most interested in critical and high vulnerabilities. Others can also be useful, but these two are the main ones. First thing we see is that it managed to find 7 critical vulnerabilities, 11 high vulnerabilities, 36 medium vulnerabilities, 7 low, and 148 information disclosure. Let us click on the scan. Right here we can order the vulnerabilities by their severity, so if I click on this arrow, it will go from the information to the critical, but mostly we are interested in critical vulnerabilities, so I will click it once again, and let's go with any one of them. We're going to see an example of each vulnerability. We're going to check one critical, one high, one medium, one low, and one information disclosure. Let's go, for example, with this one. So it says NFS exported share information disclosure. This is a critical vulnerability. Down here we can see the description and it says at least one of the NFS shares exported by the remote server could be mounted by the scanning host. An attacker may be able to leverage this to read and possibly write files on remote host. It tells us what is the solution to fix this vulnerability as it says configure NFS on the remote host so that only authorized hosts can mount its remote shares. Down here it tells us where it found the vulnerability, it found it on our Metasploitable on the 2049 UDP port. And what you would do, for example, is you would then 
Google this vulnerability, which we learned in the previous video, where we covered Googling vulnerabilities and search split, and you would see how you would exploit this. For now, we know that this exists. Let's check another critical vulnerability. Let's go, for example, onto this one. Bind shell backdoor detection. It says a shell is listening on remote port without any authentication being required. An attacker may use it by connecting to the remote port and sending commands directly. Hmm. This seems like a really big problem. And we're going to see in the next section how we can actually gain access from this critical vulnerability. It is very, very easy, trust me. But these types of misconfiguration happen often. Down here we can see the solution, verify the remote host has been compromised and reinstall the system if necessary. And the actual vulnerability is found on the port 1524 over TCP. Now, since critical vulnerabilities are most important, let us check another one. Let's go on to this one. VNC server password is password. So it seems that we get the default credentials for some software running on our Metasploitable. As it says, the VNC server running on the remote host is secured with a weak password. And this type of vulnerability is something that you will find the most. Now, it doesn't have to be anything connected to the VNC server, but weak credentials are something that even the biggest companies have. And you can have all the security in the world, but if your password is weak, none of that security will matter. Down here we see the Nessus logged in using a password, password. And what port was it on? It was port 5900 over TCP. So we will see how we can exploit all of this, but let us also check out some other vulnerabilities as well. Apache Tomcat AGP connector request injection. Let's click on it. This seems to be a high vulnerability, and it tells us a file read inclusion vulnerability was found in AGP connector. A remote unauthenticated attacker could exploit this vulnerability to read web application files from a vulnerable server. It tells us that the solution is to actually upgrade the Tomcat server to the newer version. And down here it tells us over which port did it find the vulnerability, which is port 8009. On the right side we can also see some additional vulnerability information, such as what is the vulnerability for, it is for Apache Tomcat. Is the exploit available? Yes, the exploit exists for this, and they are available. The patch was published on March 1st, 2020, and vulnerability was also published on that same day, and Nessus managed to successfully exploit it. Reference information, and here are the vulnerability names. So you would just type this, search for an exploit for it, and you would manage to exploit the Metasploitable machine. Let's check out a few more vulnerabilities, and then we are going to wrap up with this tutorial. Let's go to a medium one, and let's go for example to this one, SMB signing not required. Signing is not required on the remote SMB server. An authenticated remote attacker can exploit this to conduct man in the middle attacks against the SMB server. Now we have not covered man in the middle yet, but later in the course we will be devoting an entire section to this attack, to the man in the middle attack. So for now, we just know that the SMB port, which is running on port 445, is vulnerable to the man in the middle attacks. Okay, let us also check out some information disclosure. So right here we can see open SSL detection, service detection, get request, SSL TLS version supported. So we can check out which SSL and TLS versions are supported. This plugin detects which SSL and TLS versions are supported by the remote service for encrypting communications. And this port seems to be running SSL version 2, SSL version 3, and TLS version 1. And these are just different protocols used for encryption of the data that is being transferred over this port. And once again, you will see that SSL is vulnerable to the man in the middle attack. We can decrypt this data using that specific attack. However, don't worry if you fully don't understand what I'm talking about. This is once again something that we will cover in a later section. Okay, great. Do you see right now how amazing this NASA scanner is? It literally gave us most of the vulnerabilities just from a single scan. In the next section we will see how to exploit most of these vulnerabilities on the Metasploitable, but on other targets as well. In the next video we are going to scan other machine using Nessus, and we are going to see what results we get. See you in the next